guys and welcome to this new episode of A Dog Soul. I'm Anita, I'm your host and a professional dog trainer and today we're gonna talk about puberty when insanity strikes. So this is a time in the dog's life where we really do need a lot of patience because the dog get a little crazy, everything's changing, and many dogs develop some kind of selective hearing, so they get distracted easily and we have a little more difficulty working with them and getting their attentions and stuff like that. First, we have to be sure about what puberty and adolescence are and how you can find these phases in your dog. Let's start with puberty. Puberty is a period where your dog is affected by more sex hormones than before. So sex organs are developing and of course hormones are released into the bloodstream. And what these hormones do, and a lot of people aren't aware of that, is they affect brain development. So Sex hormones are really important for the dog's brain to grow into an adult brain. So it's not just an expression, it's true that the brain is actually changing and therefore, of course, the thinking uh, changes and how our dogs react to stimuli changes and it's a really difficult time for our dogs as well, not just for us, of course, for us as, as owners as well. And you can see this in your dog when all the teeth have changed. Then your dog is in full puberty. And as soon as the dog is able to procreate, adolescence starts. So you can see this in male dogs when they start lifting their legs, but be careful very fearful dogs or anxious dogs don't lift their legs because they're too shy to do so. So in dogs who don't have any anxiety issues, you can see the leg lifting when they reach adolescence. For female dogs, it's when they get into heat the first time. So you see, it's kind of obvious and the changes in the dog's brain and in the dog's body, all the new hormones or increased hormone levels, of course, affect behavior in puberty as well as in adolescence. I think it's really good to remind ourselves that both are just a phase. So the craziness and the, um, the difficulties will end sometimes when there's no medical problem and when there is no castration. Of course, if a dog is castrated while the brain is still developing, that development is at least slowed quite some amount. What that means is that those dogs who are castrated too early will not grow up as fast or at all. So, of course, one should always think about taking some kind of operation and of course especially when it's about amputating something or taking out organs and unfortunately with castrations um, people are often way too quick with the decision just to have it easier but it's often done for behavioral issues and most of the time those aren't affected by the castration because they are not affected by sex hormones. And of course, some behaviors might change because they are related to sex hormones, but you should always be very careful about that decision. And if you're thinking about getting your dog this operation, then you might want to consider letting him grow up first. So this would be around two years, three years, four years, five years, depending on, on the breed and the size of your dog. With female dogs, you can count the heat periods. So the first three times your dog goes into heat, the brain development gets a huge jump. So 
this would be very important to consider. All right, so what what's happening inside our dogs in these periods? First of all, they have higher stress levels because they have to deal with their internal changes as well. And therefore, every stimulus is a little bit harder to deal with than before. So everything your puppy has learned as a puppy will get tested now. Be aware that um, every distraction, of course, is more difficult as well in this time because your dog's busy with internal issues and therefore just try to assess if a distraction is necessary. If it's not, just try to avoid it and try to give your dog as much breaks as possible. For the everyday life, you can try to make it a little more quiet, a little more peaceful, um, a lot of downtime and stuff like that so that your dog can recover from exciting situations. And if you experience some trouble with signals your dog should know, then you can also make it a little more easy for your dog. So, for example, if your puppy has been fine walking past other dogs in a distance of five meters, then you can just increase the distance back to 10 meters or 12 meters or whatever and make it easier for your dog to pass by other dogs now. And this would apply to every situation where you see your dog struggling a little bit. Don't take it personally. Your dog's not testing you or trying to be the leader or something like that. And he's not doing it out of spite or to anger you or something like that. It's just your dog is busy with himself or herself in this time. And sometimes that's very annoying for us, of course. But if we are patient and if we cut them some slack, they will grow up into uh, fine adults and it will be over. So what are the changes you can make for your dog? Minimize contact with strange other dogs and assess the contact with familiar dogs regarding stress levels. So of course your dog can meet his friends, but try to be aware of excitement and try to help them take a little more breaks and play in a more calm way, something like that. And if your dog cannot deal with other dogs in that time of his life, just avoid other dogs. As we said before, this time will pass and we have to make it as easy as possible for ourselves and for our dogs. Sometimes what could also help is increase the quality of rewards. So watch your dog, what are his hobbies, and you can use those as rewards, of course. And what's always a good reward is food, if your dog's interested in that. And with food, you can increase the value as much as you like. So you can choose different treats like some dried meat, for example, cheese, sausages, something like that. Or you can also play with the way you give your dog the treat. So if you just give your dog the treat from your hand, it's the least exciting method. Let's just say it like that. And you can vary that a lot. Like you can roll the treat, you can hide the treat so your dog can go search. You can throw the treat so your dog can chase it. You can throw multiple treats and your dog can just pick them up or something like that. And that way your dog gets a little more excited, but the quality of the treat is also increased a lot. So if your dog has difficulty uh, listening to what you want him to do, then try to play a little bit with different rewards and of course, try to make it easier for him again so that he is able to listen. What would be fair, and of course we want to be as fair as possible, is that we create situations where our dogs aren't up to failing. So our dogs are set up for success and not for failure. 
So, for example, if I see another dog walking towards me and my dog, and I know this is going to be a close one, then I look for some kind of escape route, or I turn around, or I pick him up, or something like that. And that way I can increase distance and make it a lot easier for my dog, and therefore set him up for success. Some methods, including waiting for the dog to make a mistake so you can correct him, are just dangerous, unfair, and of course, in a period of time where our dogs are very busy with internal changes, hormones, stuff like that, new smells uh, that were just not interesting before, but becoming very, very important now, are just not okay. And of course, they're no fun as well. And why shouldn't we have fun training our dogs? So to wrap it up, I know this is a very difficult time. And it's a lot of change for you and for your pup. And you can make it as easy as possible for the both of you. So choose situations you know your dog can handle. Only ask for behaviors you are sure your dog can do in the given situation. Avoid things that are just too exciting at the moment and uh, do a little more stress relieving stuff and calming techniques and something like that. And of course, be very careful about operations that aren't necessary and can slow down brain development. If you hang in there, and I'm sure you can, then this time will pass by and your dog will grow up and everything will be a lot easier as soon as your dog reaches his adult life. All right, so if you have any questions or want to talk about a specific topic or something like that, feel free to write me an email or WhatsApp or whatever, and I'll be happy to hear from you. Have fun and stay calm. Bye.